Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample 39. It is just e-glass matte polyester resin on a three quarter inch carbon core polypropylene honeycomb. Here is the laminate schedule. It shows the estimated weights of everything and the weights as measured. And here is the layup. Because it's polyester resin and it smells bad, I'm doing it outside. It's a moderately warm day. 55 Fahrenheit or so and normally this would be a little too cold to do polyester resin but I've got this black layup sheet that I'm going to work off of and in the Sun that is hot to the touch so I'm catalyzing this first batch at 1% which should give me a little bit working time you can see it pilling up from the release there one reason I didn't gel coat the surface here uh, besides wanting to be able to see how the core is bedded down is because the release system I had on here uh, really really releasey and uh, if I wanted something I wanted the gel coat not to fill up wax or something like that would have been better so I'm wetting out this first ply here there's some nasty chunks of glass I had to pull out this is one ounce chop strand mat and a general purpose polyester laminating resin and my wet out roller came apart just at the last minute there. This is the core. It's a honeycomb with a scrim on the surface. And to bond it, I mixed up a little of the resin with some silica, cabosil, aerosil, or something like that. And this thickens it up and makes it less likely to run out. This is pretty thin for core bedding. In most cases you'd want it thicker but I'm doing it into wet layup instead of something that's pre-cured it won't turn out to be that great but it's better than the previous sample I did this way with balsa uh, number 13 which I'll we'll look at in a in a bit so pressing it down uniformly and I'm gonna put some weights on top of here to clamp it and because I need something to keep the dirty bricks off of the surface I just put down a rag you know not ideal but the bricks weren't all that heavy so I went and got a huge chunk of aluminum and a smaller chunk of aluminum and bricks and put them on there and one issue I had here that I won't realize until I demolded is this piece of G10 sheet that I was laying up on sagged and so it wasn't applying uniform pressure and everywhere but in the very middle was uh, pretty ugly so this is why shot bags vacuum bags things that apply a more relative pressure as opposed to just a big chunk of metal that really only hits the high spots so I'm catalyzing the top laminate here after the bottom is gelled this is at 2% a little bit hotter because this is not right on that hot black sheet this is going to have to cure itself at a much lower temperature. This is probably outside the reasonable window for polyester resin at 55F, but it's in the sun and it will work. It's really important not to do this too cold. So here is the finished top skin. You can see the honeycomb through there. It's all wet out very nicely. And for this, I'm going to put some brushed on gel coat on the top surface, really just to see how it looks and to get a sense of what a finished bit will look like with gel coat brushed on just a matte as a laid up surface and you can see it's pretty gross there's lots of holes and chunks of glass sticking up and came back once it was all cured and demolded it popped off really easily again that nice release but there's something gross in the bottom there's a big void some little voids and all around the edges where there wasn't enough pressure between the flexible core and the bending sheet and not enough weight so I went at it with a grinder just to see if we get a better surface on the gel coat some I think it's 60 or 80 grit and put another coat on and it came out relatively nice so here's that void this is the bad one it's probably two or three inches long and I'm gonna try to repair it here just to show the process 
here is a little bit of epoxy because it's easier. Um, this could be done with polyester resin too, but I'm mixing some carbon black graphite powder just to give it black color so it's easier to see. And I'll get a little drill, this is probably 16th of an inch, and on each end of the void and in the middle, I'm going to drill a small hole. And the idea here is to let the, trying not to go through into the honeycomb, because with honeycomb the problem is you just pump the resin in, it fills up the cells, and doesn't fill, doesn't solve the void problem. It just pumps the cells full of goop. But here you can see it filling that void, traveling from, and need another hole. And I'm getting a lot of it into the cells there. But it does go through and it does fill the void area because the resin can flow through from one end to the other. Whereas if you try just filling it, the air that's in there already will block it off. There's no way for the air to get out, so the resin can't displace the air. Something like this, I'm really just pumping a cell full of glue. But it's a look at how to do a pretty quick and simple void repair with a syringe. And again, it would have been nicer to use more core bedding putty and more pressure to get this problem to not happen in the first place. But that's a pretty solid way to glue it back together. This works on bigger voids and it's just an example of how to do it. I'm giving it a little cleanup with acetone. Hopefully not too much acetone will run in there and mess with the resin. So there it is, all cured up. And that's a pretty reasonable way to fix something like that if you need to. And a better example, this is laminate sample 13 again, the one with balsa, mentioned earlier. Similar weight. And this one, I just pressed the core down. I did this all in one shot. And it was arguably worse than this, even though I used a lot more resin. So here I am drilling the holes again. And in this case, there's no cells of honeycomb to suck up the resin. So you can really see how this works. The resin just fill the whole void and come up through the bleed hole. And so that's a pretty solid way to do that. And it's cool to watch it go when it's colored black like this. So the weight, 20 and 3 eighths ounces, 577 grams for this one square foot. And broken out into other units. So here's the finished trimmed up panel. Is an interesting look at a way to build a cord panel open molded using this relatively light polypropylene core which is tough stiff and a lot lighter than balsa and in some ways easier to deal with than foam because of the air just runs through the semi-permeable scrim on the surface and you don't have as much trouble with core perforation and things like that and um, they can be sliced and fit quite easily. And again, there's the, the fill, you see the extent of it, and also all the resin that filled up those honeycomb cells, which, you know, is a honeycomb problem. But in general, this panel with open molding, the we're not much problem with resin filling up the honeycomb cells, the scrim on the surface of the honeycomb works really well, and it's a pretty neat material. So here is laminate sample 13, the balsa. This is a very similar panel. You can see the cured repair. And also one problem there, the drill bit, having blown out some of the glass and delaminated de that. But on the whole, it's an interesting way to do it. Thanks for checking it out.